everybody and a home for Spiro Metal. We're here in Hollywood, California with Jason for Psychroptic. How are you today, Jason? Really good, really happy to be here. It's been way too long since we've been here, so yeah. Okay, so I have to ask you this first. You guys are from Tasmania, am I? Do you say it like that, Tasmania? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, how long was to get here? How long was the flight and all the connections and all that? Way too long. Uh, I think it was it was about 16 hours all up flying. Uh, we had to fly from Tasmania to Melbourne. We had to spend a night in Melbourne. Uh, then had to fly from Melbourne to Brisbane and hang out there and do customs and all that sort of fun stuff. <laughs> and then it was like 13 hour haul from mm. Brisbane to LA. So mm. it's pretty safe to say we we're very tired by the time we got there, but you know, we're all stoked to be here. Okay, so tonight is the first night of the tour. Uh, is it too chaotic? How are things working so far? Everything seems to be working pretty well. I mean, as always, you get your little little hiccups and stuff mm -hmm. at, the, at the start of the tour. I mean, especially for us, having to fly such a long way, we can't bring a lot of stuff with us. So we're running on the bare minimum. So since we got here, we've been doing a lot of running around, getting the bits and pieces we need. But you know, now, the first show is on and we're just excited to play. I mean, it's been such a long journey. I just I just want to get on stage and <laughs> play some death metal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you guys are going to do a tour that is almost like a month long. I know it's hard to pinpoint, but if you had to pinpoint one objective or what do you want to accomplish in this tour, what would it be? Oh, it's a hard one. <laughs> uh, just getting to play live every day is, to me, that's a that's a big enough achievement. I mean, that's what we love doing. So as long as, as long as people turn up to the shows and everyone has a good time, that's that's all that matters to us. Okay, there's a lot of Australian bands that are getting bigger and bigger. I have the feeling like Australian bands are becoming this thing that people really want to watch and people are excited. Oh, they're from Australia. I don't know, from your perspective, being from uh, that part of the world, do you see things like that? Do you see this op be people being open and excited about you guys? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, because it's, it's only sort of been over the last five, ten years where bands out of Australia have really sort of tried to push it and go abroad. You know, it used to be a very internal scene down there. So, you know, I... I I suppose people might see it as a bit of an exotic thing or a bit of a novelty. I mean, but it's it's great to see so many Aussie bands getting out and and playing to the world, and and so many of them are doing so well at the moment. I mean, there's a lot of great metalcore bands and stuff like that that are really kicking goals abroad, which is it's great to see. And you guys have been together for so long, and you haven't toured here that much. Is that a specific reason for that? Uh, it can be really expensive for us to get out here, which you probably hear from a, the same thing from a lot of the Aussie bands. Um, you know, it's we've we've all it's something when we we first started touring, we we always really wanted to get over here, but you know, trying to when you're so far away, you know, back before the internet and, and social media and stuff, it was always it was always such a hard task trying to trying to get the contacts and, and stuff like that and we came I think it was for, for about three years we we came out and did a few tours I think we did about four tours in three years out here and and then was, I don't don't know really why we didn't come back I mean we we did put a lot of focus on Australia and Asia I mean we've We've always had a pretty pretty steady fan base out in Europe, so we've always tried to hit that at least once a year. But now it's, I don't know, we want to get back out here again. And, you know, there seems, I suppose there seems to be a bit of a buzz going for us again out here now. The, the new album seems to be going well out here, so it's like, shit, you know, it's, it's time we get our asses back over to the US, you know, and, and start getting back into it again. And I think we've got a, a great booking agent now as well, which I think, you know, really, really helps things along. You know, we know we can come out here and there's going to be shows booked and, and shit's going to run smooth for us. So, yeah, should be seeing us over here more often than, than we have over the last five years. Yeah, that was going to ask, so if you are given the opportunity, like King Perry, for example, King Perry has been touring here non-stop almost. Would you like doing something like that here in North America? I don't know if, if we're a band that would tour non-stop, say, how King Parrot are at the moment. We sort of, 
we, we had a, a stage where we were touring a lot, you know, going back probably about five years ago after the release of Observant. And, you know, we had a lot of fun doing it, but because it's, it's not something that, it's not a full-time job for us. It's something we do because we love, you know, and it's, I don't know, I, I think when, we're, when we are doing, you know, just hitting one or two tours a year in each region, you know, it, it does keep it a lot more fun for us. And, you know, it, I suppose as soon as something turns into a, a full-time job for you, the monotonies come with it, you know, so we, we do want to, we do want to keep it as something that's, that's fun, that we get excited, you know, our tour's coming out, it's like, fucking great, you know, it's going to be awesome, and not just going, ah, oh, shit, got to go back to work again for another month, you know, and, yeah, so, I think, I think we'll, we, we're going to be touring more than what we were for the last couple of years, but I don't think it'll be something that we'll be doing 10 months a year or anything like that, so... Okay, so I have to ask you, I interviewed Matt from King Parrot a while ago, and you remember I asked him about his sound and all that, and he said, well, we still sound very Australian, we sound like an Australian band, so, and I never really understood what he meant, what is that, what does this Australian band sound like? Shit, I, I think with King Parrot, it's, uh, it's the humour that goes with that band, you know, they, they, they take, you know, all the Aussie, mm -hmm. you know, slang and all that stuff they they really embrace that in their music i mean just the way they are i mean they fucking crack me up you know we, we toured australia with them oh, i must have been like two three years gone shit it was just it was the funniest tour i think i've ever been on you know they, those guys are just they're fucking crazy dudes <laughs> they're good fun guys to hang out with that's for sure so you don't think there's something that you can pinpoint and say oh this is an Australian band just for the sound. I think once upon a time you probably could, but I think, I mean, these days with the way the internet is and, you know, it's so easy to access bands from all over the world. So I think you, you kind of hear it a lot. I mean, bands down there are drawing influence from all other countries and all other bands around the world. So. I don't think you'd, you'd so much say that there's a typical Australian sort of sound these days. I mean, once upon a time maybe, but you know, you had bands like Damaged and, and, and that sort of just really angry, straight down the line, rough sounding stuff. I mean, that was a pretty typical Australian sort of sound back then, but I, I don't think these days that there's, there's so much of a unique style out there. So in this line of thought, you guys are from a very <laughs> isolated place, I would say. Yeah. So do you think this is like, because you're so isolated and you probably don't have as much content and tours coming down to you guys, no. um, do you think this is, is an advantage? Because you kind of, even though you have content, you see things going on in the world. Do you see yourselves as isolated and keeping your core, like, inspirations? Yeah, I think, I think where we live has obviously had some sort of influence on our sound. I mean, we've always tried not to look to other bands for inspiration, you know, so, I mean, we all listen to a very broad variety of stuff from, you know, your old Seattle-style grunge right through to extreme black metal and everything in between, so, yeah, and I, I suppose, you know, Tasmania's a pretty chilled-out place. There's not many people live there. It's very slow-paced and, you know, it's... It's different to anywhere else I've been in the world. So I, I suppose, to an extent, yeah, the, the way we grew up and the place we live has influenced the way we are as a band. So you're some, you, you, you guys are extremely technical. And to tell the truth, I think some technical bands <coughs> get into that trap of being too technical and don't have, not having any soul or even losing the entertainment part of the listener. Yeah, yeah. They, I think a lot of bands get stuck in that being technical for the sake of being technical yeah. whereas I think I mean the way Joe does all our writing mm -hmm. you know he I mean he, he he listens to all sorts of stuff you know and I think he he's he always keeps it in mind it's got to be catchy it's got to be a song it can't just be a big string of notes I mean it's not going to stick in someone's head you want this to be catchy you want people to remember it you know so yeah, so I think we, we probably take a bit of a different 
aspect to what a lot of technical bands do, but you know, we always try to keep our own spin on it. But we all, the big thing is, is keep a lot of groove and keep it really catchy. You know, we want people to go away humming the riffs, not just going away going, fuck, that was fast. What the f fuck just happened, you know? So, which, you know, I mean, a lot of technical bands, it, it is, it's pretty impressive to watch yeah. these guys pull this shit live, but you know, that's, that's not the line we want to go down with it, so. So is this something you do pay attention to? You, you don't want to go in that trap and just like showing off like, oh, look, we can do all this. Yeah, I think, I mean, when we recorded Symbols of Failure like 10 years ago, I think we were one of those young bands, I think, that were sort of caught in that trap a little bit of, you know, putting too many riffs, not, not continuing things, just chopping and changing too much. And I think from doing that album, I mean, not that we think it's a bad album, we're happy with the way it came out and everything, but I think we learned a lot from that album, like listening back to it and, and thinking, well, f from a live point of view, it doesn't come across as well as, say, what it, it does on a CD for people. So, you know, and, and touring was something we really wanted to pursue. We wanted to play live, you know, that's, that's where it's at for us, you know. And, and so I think we, we learned a lot from that album and we, we, we looked at it and thought, well, how, how can we make this more appealing? How can we make this more fun for us to play live as well, you know? And, and that translates over to the crowd, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah, your new album is very uh, diverse. It's, you don't get bored listening to it. It's yeah. very, yeah, yeah, yeah. So talk about this new album. It's self-entitled. So why? Why this one and out now? I don't know. I think uh, when when we finished the album and listened back to it, it it just defined so many elements of of what the band is and where it's going and what it has been. And you know, we just the artwork as well we didn't want to be putting big titles over it because we thought the artwork looked so fucking great we that's why we only put the the band name on it so small because like oh shit you know we were even throwing up with not putting the logo on there and, and so i think yeah it was there was a lot of elements involved and it was something that we just sort of threw out there and the more we thought about it the more we thought it made sense you know so it's like six albums in let's let's go with it so this new album, if you could, could uh, just say a few words about it, uh, it would be probably more, the more honest album, you'd say? I don't know, it's it's one we we spent, I think we definitely spent the most time on it. It was, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to describe us, but I mean, we we got very experimental with it, you know, we just, we just sort of went with, you know, we've always been a band that we play what we like you know we we don't limit ourselves but this this album i think we just pushed that whole thing a bit further and we're like well let's try a lot of different things let's go for bigger choruses and you know i think it's i mean yeah i don't know i'm getting lost now <laughs> Okay, so talk about the artwork. I was actually going to ask you this. It's very different from your previous albums. So how did you come up with this specific uh, cover? Well, we've we've always picked an artist that we like, and rather than saying you know this is this is what we'd like something along these lines, we we pick an artist that we we like what they do and we like what they've done with other other album covers and stuff that they've done and. We'll give him some lyric sheets, you know. So we've, we've got an idea of what the artist's style is, obviously straight off the mark, and that's why we picked him. But we, we give him lyric sheets and we say, you, you have creative control, you know. You read the lyrics, you, you do what you think works, you know. And, and we always seem to come out with amazing art pieces with it, you know, because if you're, if you're letting someone do their own interpretation of, of what it should be it's I think it's always going to be better you know so that's how that all came about and that's that's how it's always come about as well with us so it's good you know we're not we're not artists you know we, we started trying to <laughs> trying to throw ideas I, I you know it just kind of limits someone's creative control and you know let someone be as creative as they possibly can and you're going to get the best product and that's the way we see it anyway mm -hmm. It works. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so your art, your merch. So people like the artwork. 
they can do, do you how can people can get grab a t-shirt you have all the artwork on the merch and can grab it during the store yeah mm -hmm. yeah we've got uh we've actually got a, the artwork printed on red t-shirts and white oh, t-shirts nice. yeah, yeah we've uh done something a bit different we haven't done black t-shirts of it yet we probably will at some mm -hmm. stage but we wanted to do something mm -hmm. a bit different with that so yeah it's and it's cool people seem to be digging it yeah. <laughs> you know so many metal people always just have black t-shirts yeah. i'm a i'm a victim myself you know but <laughs> when i when i look at a merch stand i see, see like a red shirt or a white shirt yeah. Yeah, it's something different i might yeah. fucking you might get that so <laughs> yeah it's cool so if the people want to buy it, they should just go to your, your website or the label. Where is it easier or be um, more benefit for you guys, for the band? Well, we, we run an indie merch store, mm -hmm. so that's that's about the only place, I think, at this stage that you can get it via mail order mm -hmm. um, or come to the shows. Yeah, buy it directly from the band. Yeah. That always works. Yeah. And you get to see the show. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a win-win. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what are the, the plans for the rest of the year? You said you're probably going to tour more. Uh, anything already lined up? Well, as soon as this tour finishes, we go straight to Europe. Oh, nice. So we've got a few festivals over there, mm -hmm. a few club shows in the UK. Then we're back home again for a while, and then I think we're heading back over to the UK and maybe a few dates in Europe later in the year. Mm -hmm. So I'm not exactly sure when that is, but that's all getting worked on at the moment. Okay. We've done two full Australian runs and we're actually in Japan just before this. Oh, okay. So yeah, we've been covering a little bit of ground, which is, it's been really fun. Been enjoying it, so yeah, it's cool. Okay, so let's question if you have any messages for the Spear of Metal viewers. Come along to our shows, please. <laughs> <laughs> little suck hole of me. <laughs> Keep brutal. Okay, well, thanks so much, Ethan. No worries, thank you. Thank you.